Okay, you're welcome back. This is still Constituency Watch here on Joy News, your election headquarters, brought to you with the support of Star Ghana. In the studio with me is the deputy editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Peter Ankuma. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, my brother. All right, and we'll go to that constituency also, and we'll be speaking to two of the aspirants from that constituency. That's Alfred George Kojo Thompson, who is the NPP's candidate for that constituency, who we have on the phone now, and we'll be later joined. We'll also try and connect with um, Bright Adam. Uh, Bright Adam of the PPP, he is their candidate for that constituency. So he will also join us uh, for some thoughts. But let me go straight first and start off with uh, Mr. Thompson, who has already joined us. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Okay, and thank you very much for joining us on Constituency Watch. Welcome. Okay, now the Cape Coast, before it, it was split, was a hot spot or a favorite for the new patriotic party. Uh, you've won the seat since, since 1996 until 2008 when Abu Batanudru of the NDC took over the seat. Now, uh, how do you come uh, as the MPP's candidate for a newly created constituency, which is Cape Coast South? Let me first find out from you, do you feel pressured to be able to deliver that part of the constituency also for the NPP, seeing as you have won the Cape Coast since 1996? Um, I don't feel pressured at all because um, I believe um, when in hands down this time, we're taking the seat back from the NDC mm. because for the last four years, it's been a lot of forming assets. We've been seen within the gates of the NDC and everyone can attest to it in Cape Coast that uh, the usual parlance they use, the Ehoche, they haven't seen anything. There's no development in Cape Coast. There's nothing that has been done. There's no help. The lies that they told us, they've all come out and they see that it's not in their favor to vote for the NDC again. Mm. So at this particular point in time, I can tell you with full confidence, with God being our helper, we're going to win this seat and we're going to win it. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, just stay on the line with me there, um, Alfred. Um, we're joined now by Bright Adam Japonu. He is the PPP's candidate for the same constituency. Good evening, Mr. Japonu, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, good evening, my brothers in the studio. How are you? We're very well, thank you. Now, uh, let me find out from you. Cape Coast South is a new constituency, and yeah. you are the PPP's very first candidate to contest that seat. I asked Alfred the same question. Let me throw it back to you. Do you feel pressured to deliver that seat for the PPP, seeing as the flag bearer of your party hails from the central region? Yes, um, thank you very much. I do not feel pressured at all. I am very much relaxed. I am doing what I am supposed to do. And I know with Christ in the boat, I will smile at the storm. Why am I saying that? You know, the, the Cape Coast South was, was, a, a part, was part of the entire Cape Coast. Okay? Exactly, so yeah. It has been carved, okay, from yeah. the main Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. And then this is a consistency that has experienced okay, the existence of both the NDC and the MPP, okay? Mm -hmm. And I must put on record that Cape Coast has not seen any good turn from both the MPP and the NDC. Mm -hmm. And the people of Cape Coast, the youth of Cape Coast, have decided that for the first time in the history of Cape Coast, they are going to vote for me. Why am I saying that? Uh, rather, fortunately or unfortunately, the candidates that have been, uh, have been chosen by the MPP and the NDC are not known in Cape Coast. Okay. How, when, when you say they are not known, how so? Yes, As in, in terms of popularity you, or what? The, the, the NDC and the MPP, my, my brother Ricketts and my brother George Thompson, have been living outside Cape Coast, okay? I am somebody who was born in Cape Coast, who, was, who has schooled in Cape Coast, who has worked in Cape Coast, and with the people in Cape Coast, okay? I have associated myself with the people of Cape Coast. I have given jobs to the people of uh, Cape Coast, the youth of Cape Coast. Ask my brother Ricket and ask my brother George how many people has he been able to single handedly employ or has okay. been able to link with jobs. Okay. We'll get Friends to talk about done, we'll get to talk about that in a bit, but let me come back to you, um, Alfred. Cape Coast is noted for one thing in particular every year. 
water problems or water scarcity, if I can put it that way. Um, how do you intend to help address this problem? Should you become their representative in parliament? That is where I see that uh, my brother from the C uh, PPP side is um, joking. Because when you tell me that we haven't done, NPP hasn't done anything in Cape Coast, ask him that is he really from Cape Coast? Wasn't he here when, before we took over the reins of government in 2000, there was consistent water shortages in almost every part of Cape Coast. Every year or every semester when schools come, they really vacate earlier before time. They really go on vacation or they have to break twice or thrice. Well, it, it, it also happened what, during the 2000s when the MPP still held the seat. Because now I, at that time I, I was finish? in school in can Cape Coast. Finish? Yes. Okay. And that is what I'm saying that these things were things that were happening consistently. Mm -hmm. In 2000, before we took over, we told them that, listen, when we come, give us the first four years and we are going to solve this water problem. Mm -hmm. When we came within the first three years, we solved the water problem. Water was flowing till recently. I don't know whether it's a magic wand of the NDT that it starts all over again or things go bad when they get into the reins of government. But the truth is that it was solved and there was no water crisis within from the, um, after the third year or so that we empower. It was consistently flowing. Everywhere you go, you get water. Mm. And it started, it's just like the electricity problem that you are going, the doom so doom so situation that you're having now. Okay, so what are your specific plans for addressing the water problem since... When uh, we come back, mm -hmm. the same way we addressed it, we, we did the first term of our governance. We are going to do the same thing. We are going to address the problem. How exactly? I'm sure your people would want to know exactly what plans. We are going to tackle it head on and we will address the water problem. We are going to solve it. Okay. That is what we are good at doing. MPP is good at solving problems and solving it well. And that is what I'm telling you that we are going to do under the leadership of Nana Adodanko Okufado. Okay. I asked that question because uh, some people in the Cape, in the Cape Coast are also worried about the about how long the Kakum River which uh, is the main source for drinking water in the community is even going to last because human activity around the uh, river is actually threatening its lifespan so if you say you're going to help improve that's why I wanted to know what specific plans you have for improving water uh, supply in the constituency vis-a-vis -vis the concerns raised about the dying, you here, if you like, river. You were here when in 2000 we said that as soon as we took over the reins of government, you are going to solve the water problem. They didn't tell you how, but we told you that we will solve the problem. We solved it. In that okay. same vein, I'm telling you that we are going to solve this problem. It's mm -hmm. a problem NDC can never solve because they don't know how to do it. They don't, know, they don't have the know-how of anything. Okay. Anything uh, they cannot do. So we are going to solve the problem. That is why we are going to take over the reins of government in 2013. Mm. From 7th January 2013, you will see that consistently we are solving problems one after another. Things that they cannot do, we are doing and we'll do it well. Okay, let me come to uh, Mr. Jopanu and ask you the same question about the water situation. Do you have a specific plan to help address that situation? My brother, thank you. You see, you see, my, my brother George <laughs> made a statement which is very laughable, okay? You were in power, okay? Mm. You were in power, and you are, you are saying that when you come back, you solve part of it, and when you come back, you come and resolve the rest. That, that very no, he said, he said when they were in power, they solved so the problem. He, he's saying that yeah. when they were in power, they solved, they solved it, it they yes. Couldn't, they couldn't finish it. No, he didn't, well, he didn't say they when, couldn't when finish. When they take the reins, Mm -hmm. When they take the rest of power in 2000, Ma'am, Mr. Will Thompson, if you can allow uh, Mr. Jofanu to speak. No, but okay. let's not bring up to the finish. Yes, okay. Okay, okay, Mr. Jofanu, Mr. Jofanu. I think we should be very civil on the line, okay? When he was talking... Sure, Mr. Jofanu and Mr. Thompson. Okay, Mr. Jofanu, Mr. Jofanu, what he said was that when the MPP came to power, in, from the 2000s, they solved the water problem. But when the NDC took over since 2009, it looks like the problem has recurred. So what he's saying is that no, if, if, he, if they come they back resolve, again, 
then they will go back to resolve the problem. That was that's what he no, said. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. The problem is laughable. Okay. If they resolve the problem, then how can the problem have arisen again? Okay? Good. You have made a statement and you are contradicting yourself. Hmm. You have made it clear that when you are in power, you resolve the problem. So if the problem has been resolved, then that's full stop. So how come then the problem arose when the NDC came to power? Which means you didn't complete the work. Okay? okay. And then half job does not uh, uh, need any payment. Okay? Mm. You cannot be paid for half job done. So he has contradicted himself right from the way go. You cannot say that you solved the problem. Then NDC uh, came and the problem has arisen. Okay? Mm. A problem must be solved and it must be solved once. And we are saying that we have put pragmatic plans in place. I can't come so far from here. How come that people in Lao are enjoying water and people who are even close to the Kakum River are not getting water? Okay. okay. So yeah, this is something. This is something that he must answer. People who are in, in town are enjoying water, and people who are rather close to where the river is are not. Enjoying, which means. So how will you help somewhere. those who are closer to get the water? That's the question. Come again. How will you help? How will you ensure that those who are closer to the no, Kakum River, the for instance, job, also get to job, benefit? Yeah, the whole job, the laying of the pipe, mm. okay, it has to do with the laying of the pipe to places that are, are, are necessary, okay? Now, you can't do one part and leave the other part, okay? It's just, it, it's just like when you're doing mathematics, the easy, questions, the easy questions are there. You're supposed to solve the easy questions one before you go to difficult ones. Mm. Then you leave the easy ones and you rather solve the difficult ones, okay? But isn't people that a choice? Closer, <laughs> when, when, you are, when you are laying the pipelines, okay, mm. people who are closer, that's where it should start from, then go to town. But the whole thing was done haphazardly. And so there, there are still pockets of uh, 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 water problems in town. Where I am staying now, I have not enjoyed water for so many months now. For so many months now, okay? okay. Where my parents are living, close to my chance of area, they have not enjoyed water for so many months now. And we always have to buy water in town. Meanwhile, people who are rather staying in the middle of Cape Coast town are enjoying water. So mm. if my brother, my very good friend, tells me that they resolved the problem and NDC got the problem again, please, it should not go there. Okay. The problem was not fully resolved. Both the NDC and the NPP are right. filled in the water crisis, please. Okay, let's move to let's move to another let's accept that. Okay, let's move to another issue that is of concern for many people in Cape Coast. It's about the fact that Cape Coast in itself, it's a very old town. And there, I remember there were some suggestions for a redevelopment of Cape Coast. Um, Mr. Thompson, is this yeah. a plan? Is do you have a plan for this rede is it okay, let me put it this way. Do you is redevelopment of Cape Coast south where you are contesting something you intend to look at something you yeah. put on your agenda uh, before i answer that uh, let me correct this um fallacy that has been created when we took over the reins of government the kakum could not satisfy the water problem here so we had to uh, president kufo with the wisdom he had had to pull it from the such a human into the Kakum, uh, the, they made a full plan over there that was bringing the water into the Kakum, so we were enjoying this flow of water. If, through the wisdom of the NDC, things are gone bad, you cannot blame the NPP that they have done it halfway. Okay, so because now can we answer the substantive once, question? Once it's going on, you, you should know that from time to time you have to do maintenance and everything, and that is what is not happening now. Okay. Coming back to, um, uh, what do you call it? Redevelopment, you know, yeah. Uh, definitely, Cape Coast has been an altar. There are some old buildings that um, need to be, uh, need to be looked into or looked after, well, uh, or rebuilt. But we have the old, some old unique buildings that um, we use as a tourist place or okay. tourist site. So definitely, we, we're going to put a modern touch to it. But there are some buildings that would be left as it is for the attraction of tourists because it is historic. Mm in its own way. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Jopanu, the same question to you. Is redevelopment of Cape Coast South something you're considering? Yes. Uh, it is something you're considering, but I have to be very emphatic, okay, that it is going to be very difficult. Do you know why? There, there are parts of Cape Coast, okay, that were supposed to be redeveloped. Mm. And so a new place was acquired, borders were put up, and certain group of people we're supposed to move to uh, this new building so that the old buildings will be pulled down and, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, uh, rebuilt, just like the Snitch Flat, okay? Mm. Currently, currently, the land that was acquired 
for the old people to go and occupy has now moved into the Cape Coast North constituency. Do you get me? Okay. So land availability in the Cape Coast South constituency is now going to be a big challenge. Most of the land that I am aware that can be used have all been purchased by private individuals. Okay. Mm. There are areas like the switch. Okay, if you ask my brother something very much away, areas like a switch, Mintasim area, uh, those kind of areas. They, those lands were acquired so that buildings were put up for people in the old uh, uh, town of Kibul to move there. Some of the buildings were put up, people were given their rooms, and they are now hiding it out. So as of now, it must be put on record that land availability in the Cape Coast constituency is now going to be a problem. Nevertheless, okay. nevertheless, the old structures can be rehabilitated. Mm. Okay, if you say that we are going to pull down old structures and new ones go to build, it, I, I'm going to deceive the people of Cape Coast. I have okay. to be with that. Okay. The old structures will have to be what? Re, uh, rehabilitated so that they will look new. And, and, and I think there are certain, there are certain uh, burdens, uh, old hospitals and other places, there are certain burdens that are, that are there that can be preserved so that when these tourist people come home, they can, we can take something from them and then they can bring those people as uh, 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 tourists. But it might be put on record that the land availability assets now in the Cape Coast South constituency is going to be a problem because all the, uh, the way the constituency has been carved on, we mm. do not have any free land available. All the okay. land available as of now, I can, I can, I can stick my name on it, that, that the land available now has been acquired by private individuals, except the few government lands that is around the Amin Sandari area and then just around at Southern College down there. Okay. Yes. All right. Quickly before opposite, I, I let... Opposite the, opposite, opposite the house, uh, uh, center of the house of chief. Okay. Just a very piece of land available for the government. Okay. Yeah. Quickly before I let the two of you go, um, Kotokraba Market comes yeah. up a lot of times and it is about the main market in in the cape coast area um what are your plans for the market let me start with you mr japan yes uh the kotokaba market has been politicized for so long a time okay mm -hmm. and and it is something that the ppp uh, 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 party okay had it in its plan to put up a modern market complex, okay? <laughs> it is part of our agenda to give the people of Cape Coast a modern market complex, only for the current government to, to come and tell us that there are some people from Chinese coming to put out the market. Now, come to Cape Coast and see what is being done. Because of, because of politics, because of elections, mm. some, some temporary structure is being put up so that the market uh, women will move there for the actual uh, 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 construction of the market. So will now, you still go ahead with your plan for an ultra modern market for Kotokraba? We will still go for we will still go for an ultra modern market complex if you come okay. to power. All you right. Know, I, I, let, let me clarify this. Sir. We're running out of time, uh, uh, so if you can just yeah, sum yeah, it yeah, up for me in thirty seconds, yeah, so yeah, I can ask. We do not intend to abrogate any project that has been started by either the MTT or the NDC because we are prepared to develop. Ghana and Cape Coast for that matter. So okay. whoever starts a project when we come to power, we shall continue it. Okay, thank you very yeah. much, uh, Mr. Bright Adam Jopanu, the PPP's parliamentary aspirant for the Cape Coast South constituency. And Mr. Thompson, before I let you go, also, Kotokraba Market, what are your plans for it? We, when, before we left government in 2008, we mm -hmm. set aside $4 million for the Kotokraba Market. As I speak now, we don't know whether the money has been volumized or what. And um, we've been asking questions about it. As I speak now, we've asked the MC several times how much the Kotokaba market is costing. Mm. Where are the designs for the market? And who are the contractors? Up to now, they haven't been able to provide any answer. As I sit here now, I've come across some document showing that the Kotokaba market is going to put somewhere in the region of $28 million, which I feel it's, a, it's quite on the high side because I don't know how you can go and build this market for $28 million when the same designs were what we are using for the $4 million contract, which um, was taken out of the remaining $150 million euro bond that was left. We okay. set aside $4 million for Kotokaba, $4 million for Bajate, and $4 million for Mankese. The money is gone, and um, fine. The MP said that yes, we left the money, but they used it for something else. So, I have asked about that. What is the other thing? What I'm saying is that at the end of the day, yeah. once we've come back to power in 2013, which we are going to start, we're going to look at this market holistically and make sure that we are going to rebuild it to mm. the, um, the design which we expected or we've left for them to do, which they haven't.
Okay. We're going to put in all the necessary schools and all the equipment that are needed for an ultra modern market. Okay. So the Kotokaba market is going to be built. At the moment, the site is being handled by about 10 people with over millions of dollars contract that um, they claim. That, that the, about two months ago, the president said the papers were on his desk and he was going to sign for it. And up to now, he hasn't finished signing. I don't know whether right. it's the pen that is missing or the papers are missing. All right, Mr. Thompson. For it. Okay. And we are saying that as soon as we get into power, we are going to put everything in place to make sure that that market is built within the next four years. All right. Because we need to build a market for them. The people are suffering, the people are crying out, and they are shouting that they don't have anywhere to put okay. their ways. And All that right. is a problem for us at this time. Thank you very much. That uh, was Alfred George Kojo Thompson. He is the MPP's parliamentary candidate for the newly created Cape Coast South constituency. Earlier, you heard me speak to uh, Bright Adam Japonu, who, who is the PPP's candidate for the same constituency. But let me come back to the studio and uh, start with Peter here. Peter, that's there's also another newly created constituency. Sure. And this one is coming out from a mother constituency that has been dominated by the MPP Over the for years. exactly for so many years. Sure. Are we likely to see any change in dynamics this time around? No, really. This particular one, for us, we believe that the MPP has an edge. Okay. In that, you see, when you look at, in all constituencies, <laughs> you find areas or electoral areas that are, or that the political parties derive their support base from. Mm -hmm. And so you will know the strength of the political parties in terms of where they get their core support base when you look at the electoral areas and the polling station results over the years. Mm -hmm. And so, even though Fantis are, are, are Libra, meaning that they do not vote based on party lines, or they, are, they look at, it, what we say, issues, mm -hmm. they look at all manner of basket of reasons to vote, Cape Coast has been a constituency that over the years the MPP has had an edge. Is it because they, the MPP has um, sort of attended to the particular needs or the issues of the people, or it's just like traditional strongholds where they the, feel a sense of belonging. So you know, and they just yes, vote. yes, both. And in a sense, in when you look at central region, mm -hmm. even though they look at all manner of reasons to vote, there are some constituencies within the central region that the political parties derive their their, their strength mm -hmm. in terms of having their chunk of support base from. And Cape Coast happened to be one of one that one could easily say was safe for the MPP. It's an area that the the people feels much more comfortable associ associating with the MPP than okay. the any other political party. Mm -hmm. But of course, the other political parties also had some chunk of support base from some electoral areas mm -hmm. or some constituents within the Cape Coast. Yeah. For instance, when you look at the London Bridge area, mm -hmm. the low cost at the saddle, the Chapel Square, Victoria Park area, mm -hmm. those were areas that the MPP has always dominated. And okay. these are areas that form the Cape Coast South mm -hmm. constituency. And so, but before I come to the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. that, let me give you some history of Cape Coast. You know, the Two main political parties that, 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 that has dominated the Cape Coast constituency was, of course, the two dominant parties, the yeah, MPP and NDC. And, yeah. and until 2008, the MPP has um, been winning. And the reason why the MPP lost in 2008, when you read Atake's book, it gives you a hint as to why they lost their seat. Apart from that also, they, they also picked up signals why they lost. Of course, they presented a disunited front mm -hmm. in 2008. And again, the, from Atake's book, some of the party's old folks were sort of also sidelined in terms of campaigning. And so okay. the areas that I mentioned that the MPP sort of um, had always been winning in 2008 reduced in terms of the um, margin of victory that they won in those electoral areas. For instance, in 1996, when Madame Christine Churchill contested, she won the constituency with a margin of victory of 4,564 mm -hmm. against um, Valis Achienu of mm -hmm. the NDC. In 2000, Madame Christine, Christine Churchill again yeah. contested, and of course, the 
the issues that we dealt with at the other time about the, the wind of change. Yeah. And the, you know, Fant is very liberal. They look at issues. Mm -hmm. They look at um, whether, uh, you know, by 2000 or so, the NDC as a party had become unpopular in mm -hmm. terms of the, they are, they've been, in terms of, in terms of the fact that they've people felt power. that they've been in power for long and that they needed yeah. change and mm -hmm. all manner of things. And so that was also helped the MPP and Madam Christine Churchill to increase their margin of victory mm -hmm. to 8,023 votes in the parliamentary and 9,143 votes in the presidential. Okay. But by 2004, there the disunity within the MPP began to set in. Mm -hmm. And Madam Christine Churchill also sort of started losing grounds. You know, she was she lost her ministerial appointment. Exactly. And so that sort of also worked against her in the constituency that if she was that good, why she would not have been dropped? Like, sort of. Yeah. So that and even though the by then MPP was popular in the constituency, Madame Kissin Church's votes in terms of the margin of victory that she won against the NDC sort of reduced. Mm. She contested against uh, the deputy AG, Mr. Ebo Batinodro. And Madame Kisitecha won with a margin of victory of 4,726. But in the presidential, the MPP actually increased the margin of victory to 10,579. And, and it was because of her, um, um, her, mm. her becoming unpopular, unpopular with within, yeah. of course, and the fact that she lost her ministerial appointment and many other things. In 2008, this time, lawyer Ebo Batinodru, but then had been with the people for mm. some time now, had helped a lot of people in terms of legal uh, issues and other things. And you know, also appealed a lot to, you know, the Cape Coast then, or Cape Coast constituency, the swing areas. Mm -hmm. You know, the party takes some chunk of support base yeah. from some electoral areas exactly. within the constituency. But the areas that sort of determined who won the Cape Coast constituency was the university area. Mm -hmm. Where you find a lot of the students, yeah. and they, they, they will want to see a lot of issues mm -hmm. in terms of who will be able to provide water, in terms of who will be able to provide security. Because they themselves were facing a lot a of lot problems of, sure, as far as water sure, was concerned. Sure, and so Ebo, uh, deputy, the deputy AG, AG, did a lot of work there, and so mm -hmm. that sort of helped her, him. Okay, sort of, and the division within the MPP also they didn't helped them mm. in 2008. Yeah. And so this time, he won, Ebo Batinodro won in 2008 with a margin of victory of 7,268. Quite But in the presidential, the um, MPP lost to the late president yeah. and NDC by a margin of victory of 5,976. And that should tell you that Ebo Batinodro then was so popular that that helped him to win the constituency. But now it's been divided. Mm -hmm. And an analysis of the electoral areas, and like I said, the polling station results mm -hmm. shows that the NDC can boast of their core support base from the Cape Coast North area. Not the South. And not the South. Okay. The North, the South is dominated by the, MP where, by the uh, areas where the MPP will always win. Mm -hmm. And that puts my friend Alfred Thompson In much the more... Lead. But so, but there are uh, quite a number of issues that are coming from the south as well. The issues I I run by the, the issue of water, the issue of the Kotokraba market, which has always been on the uh, on the Key. front burner, and yet nothing is done about it. And yet, we see them vote in a particular way. Are we do are we likely to see a change? That okay. After how many years of talking about Kotokraba market, we haven't seen anything done. But at least now, when the stand government has begun working on the market, is it likely to tilt their voting pattern a little bit? Or still, it doesn't really well, matter? Because it is the going to play a, a role. It is going to play a role. But when you look at uh, an analysis of the constituency, mm. gives the key makers here, I mean, the floating voters, who, I mean, would have determined who wins the seats mm -hmm. here. They are not much to to be able to tilt the constituency to uh, a candidate who, who will be able to sell or who will be able to market himself very well. Um, the unfortunately or fortunately, the MPP 
can boost off in the much more areas where they can get their core support support base from mm -hmm. and that puts Alfred in the lead over okay. his uh, I mean, understand contenders. the NDC's but candidate isn't particularly popular is that also well. something that's working against him in that constituency which it, perhaps puts Alfred in the in the lead sort of but the PPP candidate is somebody who is known within the area yeah and of course is been able to you know sometimes the people will also want to feel much more comfortable mm -hmm. they will want to see that you are with them yeah they will want to see you when they are they are having some social functions mm -hmm. funerals mm -hmm. sort of talk of any all manner of social functions. they want to see you around so that they can at least boost of oh the mp or the yeah. an aspirant was around when, when i was yeah. having my wedding or mm -hmm. sort of exactly. so the pb area is quite popular but unfortunately the uh, party where they, they came in terms of CPP, mm. do not boost a, boost of a lot of core support base from this area. So quite clearly, it is a contest between him and the MPP. But of course, depending on how the parties adopt strategy in terms of campaigning mm -hmm. will help. Okay. The popularity or the personalities will count, mm. even though it will not be that much. But of course, the strategy and the slip in terms of just not being focused at the last minute could also help the the candidate contest but of course uh, because the MPP can boast of a lot of the electoral areas that are you know, usually aligned mm. or we always vote for them that sort of helps uh, Alfred and the MPP Mm. Yeah, or put them in a much more better position to take the seat for the MPP. But the PPP the looks like it's attracting quite a number of floating voters. That, that is the key And case. people from CPP as well and oh, all well. that. And some w sort of... some From the traditional MPP NDC and, 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 MPP. and MPP. Would it be a surprise to see, say, uh, Bright Adam Jopanu win that Cape Coast South constituency? We'll be very surprised. But our work and the signals we are getting, Alfred is likely to take the seat for the MPP. Okay, so it's for you, as you see it now, it's a straight fight between Alfred Thompson of the NPP and Adam, and Adam Jopano of the PPP. Yes, for now. But of course, the NDC can boast of some chunk of support base, but mm. that is not, the, their, their core support base is not enough to win the seat for them or to take okay. the seat. I, I asked because I saw a message someone has sent us who kind of thinks that, um, where is it? Okay, let me just... He says, Ni, no matter what the aspirants will do, Alfred Thompson will win the seat for the MPP. That's sure, that Jimmy is, sending yeah. us that message. Yes, because they can, like I said, most of the, le most of the electoral areas that falls within this constituency mm. are areas that they have always been winning. Mm. And now that they are, they, they are united, now that Alfred has been able to bring some patrons that were, that felt felt um, sideline 208 mm. he looked to bring them on board you remember he launched his campaign and former president Kufo was there a exactly. lot of the old groups were there yeah. that unity is helping him mm. a lot his, of course his personality is being in the constituency for now you know he, he comes from there but he wasn't based there but now he's moved okay he moved up i think about a year or so mm. and so he's doing a lot of work Okay, this one is from Richard Question of Insu. He says, these arguments will not solve the water problems of the good people of Cape Coast. I ask that they should hit the ground running and stop the explanation because leadership is all about taking responsibility. Thanks a lot for your message, Richard. And this one from Onassis. He says, since Mr. Thompson is not sure of the supposed documents, he can't save his image not to use such mysterious amounts for uh, your message is not too clear if you can probably send us that again uh, we'll appreciate that very much but oh, um sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> <You nearly laughs> said <Alfred. laughs> exactly because i was going to ask about the personality issue how much of a factor will it contribute to this particular race apart it from issues it is it will is. it be as big as issues will be um you know, the kingmakers will want to look at the issue of personality. Mm. They will want to look at the issue of the message mm -hmm. and the strategy that the parties will adopt, how focused in terms of campaigning they will be. But unfortunately, within this constituency, the kingmakers are not that much okay. 
to be able to look at all those things to determine who wins the seat. Mm. You get it. Yeah. And so for us, per our work, even though, and of course, the, um, the personalities, all the three people contesting are quite sort of uh, popular, popular within. Okay. Because they, they, they are from there, mm. they are known, mm. they, they've been attending the functions. And so the people now sort of feels much more comfortable or associated mm. with them. Okay. And so the, Afri the advantage that Alfred is having now is that he can boost off that core support base, okay. which is intact now because now they, they are united. Mm. And now his popularity is helping him. He's adopted quite a good strategy. He's focused. And so he's also competing with the PPP and NDC candidates over with the keymakers. Mm. And so if he, he's sort of getting some chunk of support base from the keymakers. Okay. And that puts him a bit ahead okay. over the other contestants. We'll, we'll have to be wrapping up, but one last message that has come through um, from Maputo. He says, with the achievements the, <laughs> with the achievement the NDC has chalked in Cape Coast South, I am very sure the NDC aspirant will pull a surprise. Well, mm. that is your prediction as well. Peter mm. thinks, for now, Cape Coast South is a straight fight between the NPP and the PPP yeah candidates for that uh, seat but Maputo tends to uh, disagree yeah. with Peter of course December 7th is under 40 days away let's uh, bide our time now and let's see how it pans out in the Cape Coast South constituents but that's uh, all time will allow us for tonight unfortunately so I'll have to say many thanks to Peter Nkuma of the Daily Dispatch newspaper he's a deputy editor, editor there and uh, thank you so much for being with us in the thank studio too, and I, of course I have to say a big thank you to Alfred George Kujo Thompson of the NPP who is the NPP's aspirant for the Cape Coast South constituency and also Bright Adam Joponu he is also the PPP's uh, parliamentary candidate for that same constituency my name is Nia Kofi Smatabi. Nightly news comes up shortly. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow at 10.